Whether you have a house, a car, an airplane, a guitar, you will have to do maintenance at some point on that stuff. So that's how I'm tying in this episode. My name is Graham Wilson. This is the Super Piloters channel. I'll be talking about doing a little bit of guitar maintenance in my basement. So I guess first what we got to do is get a guitar. I was trying to figure out how to tie this all into aviation. And, uh, well, you know, there's there's certain things. Anytime you're turning a wrench or, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> prying something off, uh, you know, you got to be careful about things and you got to do it right. Uh, if you are, it could be as simple as uh, adding oil to your airplane. You know, how many people out there have tightened up the, uh, the dipstick too much on an airplane? Everybody. <laughs> so... Here we go. And what else we got here? Wrenches in the house. Pickup guard was expecting truck hits. Well, anyways. <laughs> uh, Pickup. Yeah, okay. I got gotcha. you. Captain Literal is in the house here. That's okay. We like puns around the Super Pilotish channel. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to remove my little whammy arm here. Yeah, so what happens is when you buy a brand new guitar... It comes with a, uh, a, a thin plastic, uh, I guess a plastic protective piece of plastic <laughs> over the pick guard. So this is the pick guard here. It's kind of shaped like this. Let's see if you can see that. So right now there's there's actually a piece of plastic on there. I've, I've already taken off the little protective stuff on the back. Film, thank you, Shecky. <laughs> yeah, the, the, you know, the plastic film, that, that stuff, you know, it's like see-through. And uh, so I've had that before. Uh, I've removed it before on my other guitar when I bought that brand new. And then it was like, oh, I'm not sure what I'm doing. Still kind of don't. I checked out a YouTube video from somewhere, somewhere else before doing this today. But, okay, first thing we're going to do is I got a little towel out here on the workbench. I don't know how this will show up. We'll do the best we can. Uh, not too shabby. All right, and so what the first thing we got to do is remove these uh, the knobs. And I was trying to think the one the video I saw said that okay, when you put them back on, you put it so that the 10 you crank it up all the way, and so the 10 you're facing the 10. Uh, there's like little numbers on there. Can you see that? But the way I'm going to remember it is okay, I have this cranked up all the way, all the way to 11. I wish, but uh, if you crank them up all the way, then the uh, you can see that they're all uh, they're all level. So I'm gonna remember that for later. Okay, so if you're taking anything apart, you gotta remember how to put it back together. All right, there we go. We're gonna get Grandpa's old ashtray here, but I use it for guitar picks now. So I got that's my usual uh, practice guitar pick. And hey, April. <laughs> like your music notes there. This is my neighbor Travis's pick in case he comes over and wants to jam. This is my other pick that I use for funk because it's a little thinner. And I, I got this Canadian one just because it's cool. So I'm going to use the Canadian one. And we're going to use that to pry off the knobs. I think you can kind of just pull them up. Not quite. I saw some guy do this on a, on a YouTube video. Never tried it before. Uh, the, the only thing that I can tell is just don't, don't start reefing on it and start busting stuff. But, uh, I mean, there's a certain, any type of maintenance you do on any kind of uh, machine or anything, there's always a chance that you're going to break something. So we're going to just kind of pry it underneath a little bit. And then hopefully be able to get my fingers underneath. Uh, come on. Well, there we go. And you can see there's a... Uh, there's a little spline that that fits on. So we're going to go tone here all the way clockwise. Okay, all the way clockwise. We'll see if we can pull this one. Uh, not a set screw. No, wrench. I'm surprised there's no set screws on here. That's what my little uh, uh, my little YouTube video just showed me that. But, I mean, this is, like, the not, not the most expensive guitar out there. I think if you had, like, uh, the split pickups where you got to pull and push, those would probably have a... Uh, uh, set screw on them because they have I know Gibson has pickups like that hey there we go well nothing broken yet <laughs> okay now the next thing we got to do is 
okay you gotta you gotta uh, loosen off some of these screws because if you take off all the screws you can kind of see them on there if you take off all the screws around the outside this whole thing will come off but i'm going to see if i can get away without um, removing my strings now when i did it on my gibson uh sg or my uh, epiphone sg it uh i i did that while i was uh, like when i was changing the strings i took them all off and it was a lot easier but I'm going to see if I can do something special on this one. Okay, so I'm going to undo this two turns. Okay, there's half, one, one and a half, two. Okay, I'll do that. So that's what uh, the, the one video I saw said do it two or three turns. So here we go. We're going to go half, one, one and a half, two. And we'll do that all the way around. Now this is, uh, these screws are just regular wood screws. And uh, the screwdriver I'm using is just good old Woody, just the regular, I call it Woody because it's got the wood handle. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so I just use this. Uh, it's just your regular Joe Blow size. <laughs> I forget what it is, number two, I think. Uh, duh, duh. It's just a regular, no, no special tool required, just a regular Phillips head. Oh, there you go. And that's another thing too that if you uh, if you're doing any kind of maintenance, you got to make sure that you have the right sized um, the right size screwdriver or the right size wrench or whatever because you don't want to be stripping anything. And I heard you just do it around the outside. You don't want to have one and. Uh, Okay, yeah, you don't want to use this on the other ones. Okay, if you see right here by the pickups, uh, okay, you can see this is your single coil, single coil humbucker or double coil pickup. And these, uh, the ones, uh, these screws here, those adjust the height of your pickups. So I already kind of did a, I don't know, I kind of adjusted the height on those before. Because I decked my guitar, man. You got to deck it. That's that's uh, that's Stratocaster lingo. So, anyways, that means that my little whammy arm here is it goes all the way back to uh, all the way back to the deck or the body of the guitar. Yeah, what the heck? you know? It's kind of like I just uh, <laughs> I just thought I'd do this online today because it's like. I got to do it anyways, and I figure I'll just call it multitasking, and it's some YouTube content, and uh, okay, so we got that all up. Content is content. Uh, tiny screwdrivers are cool. That's true. Uh, I do have a, a really cool set of uh, tiny screwdrivers. Every, every machinist needs a, a set of tiny screwdrivers, so you can adjust the uh, <laughs> your safety glasses, and uh, if you have like a dial uh, indicator, uh, the, those backs, they always come off, so you got to fix them up. Okay, now I got, uh, apparently you're supposed to loosen off. There's some uh, some nuts on here. Uh, one, two, three. I don't know what size that is or if it's metric or not, but I'm going to see if I have the right size wrench. Okay, what do we got? We got a three-eighths. Is that going to work? Uh, or is that metric? Well, that might be metric. Huh. Let's try it out. Yeah, I just got my crappy little... Oh, that was another thing I was going to talk to you about tools today. This is the time of year when all the tools go on sale. Or at least that's what I found. So, I mean, I bought this... Uh, I kind of, if you're moving into an apartment or something, you got to have kind of a... The first thing you want to buy is like a set of tools. Now, here's a... I don't know if I can show you here. Whoa, it's one of these guys here. It's got one of those, you got to get yourself, if you don't have any tools, get yourself a kind of all-in-one uh, tool set with uh, wrenches and pliers. And this one here has like a hammer, adjustable wrench. Uh, I don't know. And uh, it's got just about a little bit of everything you need. And this time of year after Christmas, they usually, uh, usually kind of go on sale. Bizarro, that's not working. Ten millimeter. Usually, if it's uh, if it's metric, your ten millimeter is always getting used. Seven sixteenths. Let's try that. 
a little loosey goosey. 11 millimeter. Isn't this exciting? Well, yeah, I'd say that's probably a 7 16 All right. 7 16 it is. Hopefully, it's not reefed on too tight. I'll just get that off. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Oh, that was really loose. Yeah, looks like those left-handed kids over in China, they're doing a bad job here, not tightening this up. Okay, let's kind of loosen that. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> it's looking a little goofy here. Uh, let's hope for the best. Worst comes to worst, I rip it all apart and do another episode. Okay, here we go. Let's try pulling off a bunch of this. And I've heard you don't for the uh, the pickup selector switch here. Uh, I've heard don't bother loosening that off. We'll see. And the reason you do that is because the the little plastic film is uh, it can get kind of stuck underneath and it just looks a little trashy. So we don't want to we we don't want a trashy looking guitar now, do we? Then you just try to. Take it off with your fingernail somehow. Uh, come on now. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I don't know if you can, probably can't see that on the camera, but there's a pretty good size hole. I don't know. Can you see that? Yeah. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, there's a little hole right there. So that, that worked out nicely. It's, just, it's coming right off. So my plan is to go all the way over and kind of bring it out this way. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, here we go. It's looking good. Maybe, maybe looking good. Oh, look at that. That came off nice. Okay. Yeah, didn't need to do it by the selector switch. There we go. Whoa. Maybe we'll loosen off this nut a bit more. Live on the edge. Live dangerously in the basement. Oh, that worked out nice, too. Ooh. Hey, 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 get lucky. Now, the reason I'm saying that you got to take this off, I would say take it off sooner than later because uh, on my other guitar, it was starting to get a little, I don't know, it can you, it can kind of be like a little bit of film there, and then you, you need, um, uh, yeah. I, I got some bar saw here just in case there's like sticky residue, but it looks like it's doing okay. Now, this is the cool thing about the Stratocaster is that if I'm trying to pull this all off, but it's underneath the strings, I saw this neat trick that this guy did on the internet. And we'll, we'll put that whammy arm back in there. And so that loosens the strings. That gives you that kind of... Okay. And uh, so we're going to slacken off the strings here. We're going to try to pull it underneath. The worst comes to worst. I'll have to uh, I'll take the whole thing off or take the strings off. Okay, that's another thing, too. I noticed that if you deck this, uh, the uh, the whammy arm sticks up a bit more. So we'll do that. Oh, come on, baby. Can we get it? I don't know. I'm probably blocking the camera shot here, but... That's okay. I never said I was a professional cinematographer. Get that out. Yeah. Hey, just like the YouTube video. This is crazy. Yeah, that's wild when it actually doesn't screw up. <laughs> oh, there we go. I just jinxed myself, probably. Yeah. Let's push that baby down a bit more. Oh man, this is this is going surprisingly better than I thought. Hey, cool. Maybe I'll just rip that. Okay. Okay, so there we go. Um, how are we doing? Oh, rubbing alcohol works, eh, Shecky, on uh, plastic film? Yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah, it's really hard to find um, sometimes on the internet what uh, the absolute best thing is. But... Uh, I figure if it's if you see it on the internet on a YouTube channel, then it's got to be true, right? So just like this, I'm not spreading any lies here down in my basement at the Super Pilotish channel. Here we go, a puppy coming off. Oh yeah, here we go. We're in luck. Pull all that stuff underneath. 
Whoa. No way. That is working beautifully. Let's see if this comes out. Did I jinx myself? Oh, look at that. Hey. <laughs> WD-40, yes, Wrench. I've heard you use. You can use WD-40 on that. That's what a um, guy, uh, guy with the YouTube video, not me, but the other guy, uh, he used WD-40. So that looks pretty good. I don't think there's any sticky stuff there. What I might do, I'm going to use just a little Varsol on that. So I think there's just a little sticky bit. And then... <laughs> Using a well ventilated area. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> and then, so that was another thing too that I, uh, years ago, I bought this car and it, uh, it had a for sale sign in the, the window in the back for a long time. So I had to use, okay, this is just a uh, Varsol. Varsol paint thinner. Got that from Home Hardware. That's a Canadian thing. Uh, so Varsol or Mineral Spirits. I, I guess you kind of use those terms interchangeably uh, apparently the for the real woodworking gurus you know for your paint thinners it's uh, uh they have their special you know one one's more refined than another or what are we doing here i figure the varsal can't hurt i've used um uh yeah it's pretty light and it kind of evaporates sort of Sort of, kind of, maybe. I think there's a bit of naphtha in there. Uh, don't quote me on that, but all right. I'm just going to use a little. I'll use my paper towel and kind of wipe that up a bit more. Probably supposed to use some sort of a special cloth or something, but. Oh, in the USA, never heard of it called Varsol. Oh, that's interesting. So Varsol is, uh, I guess maybe that's a Canadian, maybe it's something like Kleenex or, you know, like a brand name type thing. Uh, yeah, actually, it says false Varsol with an asterisk. What's the asterisk mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, Varsol is a registered trademark of Imperial Oil Limited. Oh, I guess it's a Canadian thing. Huh. There you <laughs> I didn't know Varsol comes from Imperial Oil. That's uh, Those guys make all the oil for crappy tire, usually. Uh, your motor oil. Huh. So Varsol is a Canadian thing. So mineral spirits it is. You learn something new every day, I tell you. Okay. I'll loosen this up. Ah, good enough. Okay. So we'll tighten that all back down. Maybe I'll use like a regular cloth rag here too. Yeah. All right. That'll take a bit more of the dust off. Oh, man. She, look, she looks good now. Now, hopefully I can tighten... Hopefully I can tighten these knobs down right so they're not goofy looking. <laughs> I don't know. Let's find out. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, let's see now. Okay. Now, Shaki was saying here, something is a little heavy and smells in wood rubbing alcohol for light gunk. Oh, oh well. Um, and then, yeah, I see here too, preventative maintenance is the best maintenance. So... Uh, yeah, because, you know, if I didn't do this, eventually it would get stuck on there and it'd be really hard to, um, uh, it would be hard to take off. It wouldn't be this easy. And there's, there's lots of videos out there about that too. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter as long as these things are okay. I see what's going on here. I know what's going on. So the, these, I guess if the, um, I believe they're called potentiometers in here. If they uh, if they move around a little bit, it's not the end of the world because once it's tightened down, you just put the uh, there's like a, a spline on there, and then so whatever tooth you want, you can put it over however you want as long as it's cranked all the way. Okay, that makes sense. All right, so this is just these guys are just getting attached right to the plastic, so I can tighten them down first, and then. Uh, then I'll put my wood screws back in again. Oh, come on. Yeah. I've never actually taken this off before, so I don't know exactly what's underneath, but that looks like a can of worms I don't really want to get into. Not today, anyways. Oh, yeah. And so 
that's another thing I was talking about, about using the right size tool for the right job. Um, I really noticed that with the aviation mechanics. Um, they were, they seemed to be uh, a little bit more, I don't know, aviation mechanics seem to be a little bit more fussy about that uh, because I, I can kind of see you don't want to be stripping, stripping. Uh, they work with a lot of aluminum too, which is a little softer. So you don't want to, you know, if you're working on cars or trucks, it's a lot more steel. It's maybe a little more forgiving. So maybe that's why the uh, aircraft mechanics are a little bit more, um, I don't know, fussy about using the right tool for the right job. Okay. All right. That's, oh, that's nice. That's nice and snug. Okay. And we'll put the knobs on last. We'll see if I can tighten these guys back in. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's right. Listen to the sustain. Yeah, uh, yeah, Wrench is, uh, he's, he's referring to the greatest movie of all time. Uh, this is Spinal Tap by fantastic actor and director Rob Reiner. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, Spinal Tap is just, this is Spinal Tap is a fantastic movie. Highly recommend it. And, uh, yeah, and that's another one of the reasons why I decked this, uh, or like I, um, it, I, I thought it would get a little bit better sustain, but I don't know. I kind of, I, I kind of thought I would really, really like uh, this little Stratocaster here more than my Epiphone SG, but the SG actually has better sustain. So, and maybe I'm just kind of used to it, and maybe I'm just a bigger fan of uh, Angus Young than I am of uh, I don't know Jimi Hendrix or something even though Jimi Hendrix is fantastic, or was. Okay, all right, so that's pretty snug. Anytime you're screwing things in like this, you know, just kind of, I just use like kind of my fingers like this so you're not reefing it in too much. And you can never really, if you're just using the fingers as hard as you can, you probably won't be stripping anything. That's my theory anyways, unless you got some super strong fingers. And if they ever get loose, you can always just tighten them up again. Okay, so we're going to crank all these guys fully clockwise. And we'll put the volume on so it's flat here. I'm just going to, I think I'm just going to put it on really lightly. Then I'll kind of do a double check and then I'll squish it down all the way. Tone, tone, tone. Okay. How's that? Hey, that looks well. Oh, this one here could probably go over another tooth. See, that's why I didn't put it on all the way. Okay, try that. Crank, crank, crank. There we go. Uh, maybe I'll move this one over another tooth too. I'm kind of looking at it with a weird angle, but uh, uh, no one ever looks at this stuff, anyways. You just crank it all the way. No. Hmm. Oh well. We'll just let that slide. <clears throat> this is mostly, uh, it's pretty close to being right straight across. So I'll just slap it down and away we go. Squish, squish, squish. Oh, <laughs> That's a, I don't know what that was. All right. Hey, sounds like a guitar. I bet you it sounds probably... At least 50% better now that I've done this maintenance on it. 50, possibly 80% better. It's probably what would happen. All right. Here we go. I don't even know if this is in tune. Whoa. <laughs> Smashing stuff around. Oh, no. i got to fix my camera. Okay. I Now, I'm not really a fantastic on the, on the guitar. Uh, one of those guys that's like, hey, I can... Play me something, and then you play like two, two little things. Oh, that's all I know. That's me. <laughs> so, uh, what do we got here? Yeah, I don't know. I'll turn on my amp. See what's up. <clears throat> see, I usually, uh, I only play this usually on Saturdays now, because I call it the Saturday Stratter Day, and usually I play my other one. So this is kind of. Mm. We'll, we'll see if it's in tune. Ooh, that sounds yucky. Pro 
probably because I was messing around with that whammy arm, it went out of tune. fun watching a guy tune a guitar. <laughs> So now that she's tuned tuned up, I'll get my little uh what we got here. Yeah, so I was I was learning, uh, I figured I would get this um guitar all set up so I could play it on Saturdays, and that would be my uh my funk and surf music day. Because I mean the Stratocaster, that's your uh that was uh, it was invented right around when surf music was getting big, like uh, Dick Dale and uh, The Ventures. So I was learning this one uh, tune just on the weekend. And then, but it doesn't like, oh, that was another thing, too, is that I found out for uh, Wipeout. I never actually listened to Wipeout. That one. Uh, I never really listened to it and found out actually what key it was in. Um, so it's actually in C. I think. So anyways, yeah, was it C it starts off? C7? Then the drums go nuts. Something like that. And then G. There we go. So uh, that's something super beginner. And, you know, it's weird. When you're jamming along to the uh, to the radio or something like that, you sound like an absolute rock star. And then like you say, someone says, hey, play me something. And you're like. <laughs> and then you're like, you sound like totally garbage. Oh, well. Okay, that's enough. Uh, yeah, so there we go. Thanks for watching me. Uh, I just figured, hey, I just uh, I kind of. I was thinking about calling this like multitask Monday because <laughs> I'm like doing uh, some kind of content and you'll never see anyone with realistic content on, uh, on YouTube other than the super pilotish channel because they're afraid to look at, they're afraid to look like they suck. <laughs> but anyways, and it's like, well, Hey, I'm not, I have a great excuse. I've only been playing seriously for like, I don't know year and a few months like seriously seriously so that's about it okay uh sounded just as this song does okay yeah so that's about it um oh i didn't know wrench is saying that gibson released a self-tuned robotic guitar yeah you know what uh i would tend to believe that because it's to the, the the electronic tuners that they have nowadays are fantastic it's just it's like a little a lot of these guys you'll see it it's, it's probably about that big they just clip they clip it on the end of their uh guitar and i'm not really like they'll stick it up here on the way up at the end and then you can look at it and it'll tell you whether you're in tune or not i don't know if it gets the vibrations directly off of the the neck or something like that probably just has to sense a frequency and then it'll tell you if you're flat or sharp and then you just tune it up. But you could easily have that into like some, 
like uh, robotic machine heads up here and it'll just auto tune it. That would be easy enough to do. Lots of cheap stuff from China that you could do stuff like that. Anyways, very cool. Oh, was available 2008 to 2012. Hmm. Pretty neat, but oh well. Yeah, I just say like, uh, yeah, got enough money and like all kinds of cool tech stuff can happen. All right, so that's about it. Um, thanks for uh, watching me do a little bit of maintenance today, and hopefully you uh, uh, you are using the right tools for the right job. Not using a screwdriver that's too small that's going to be stripping things. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, yeah, that's about it. Use the right tool for the job. Take your time. Have the right attitude about it. And and uh, watch a lot of YouTube videos before you actually do it. So that's my advice for anyone doing any kind of work anywhere. So thanks for showing up there, guys. Yeah, we're just going to shut her down. And uh, so very good. Thanks for watching. All right. Bye.